Sen Bet Salam, Shabbat Shalom. We're in the 38th weekly Torah, the sabbatical reading and feeding. And we're going to find out now what happened to the sons of Koray when they provoked Yahweh. Now, we're reading about and we're studying about in the chapter, Numbers chapter 16, about the rebellion. The rebellion. And when we last left off, Moses basically set a, 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 a witness and a challenge in a sense. You understand? So that the people would know, you understand, that these rebels, the sons of, of Kore, that they had provoked Yahweh. Because Moses had told the Israelites when we last left off that if these men, namely um, uh, Kore, Datan, Abiram, and their families who stood at the entrance of their tents and did not want to come up you understand um because they had accused moses of not being sent by the god of the hebrews the true and living god but really wanting to make himself a king and had not brought them in the land and then the wilderness and and th this whole murmuring and complaining and 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 grumbling so moses told the israelites that if these men were to die of natural causes then god did not send him moses but if but but if the almighty if jah caused the earth to swallow them up then these men had provoked they had spurned the true and living god in numbers chapter 16 verse 28 to verse 30 just as Musa, just as moses had finished speaking the earth opened and swallowed them their households and all Kore's people and all of their people. And the Beta Israel, the Israelites, they fled in terror. They fled in terror and in horror. Numbers chapter 16, verses 31 to 34. Indihim Ka kabeta chachoa yalo mereta te seneteke. And it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground c -c -c clave asunder that was under them. Kuter salasa hulet midaritu mafuan kafta and arsuna beta sabo chacho nema lek orema yenabrutin asoj hulu ikao chacho nemo hulu wa wat chacho and the earth opened her mouth the earth opened midaritum afwan kafta and swallowed them up and their houses and all the men the people to say that appertaineth that belongeth to Kore and all their goods and all their belongings. Kut el Salasa, source verse 33. And Narsum, Le Narsum, Mayenebaru, Hulube, Hiwatachoa, Wada Siola, Weradu, Midaritumma, Te Zegad, Te Zegacha Bacho. Tezegachibacho, Midritum Tezegachibacho, Ka Gubayum, Mekakel Tefu. They and all that appertaineth, that belongeth to them, went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation they perish from among the assembly now what's interesting about this this verse the 33rd verse of numbers chapter 16 besides being 3 3 33 33 degrees so forth and so on is the the mystery or the mystery that's in this verse the ancient egyptian 
and ancient Kamite mythos. Here's where we find the ancient Egyptian wisdom within the so-called Jewish and the Hebrew writings. When it says, Enorusum, Le Enorusum, Yenebru, Hulube, Hiwatacho, Wode Siol, Wordu. Did you did you get that right there? It says they and all that appertaineth to them went down alive into the pit. They went down alive, living into the pit. Now people say, well, of course they were living, but then they when they went down, they died in the pit. That's the sense of it. Some say is poetry, is hyperbole, you know, the speech. That's how they spoke back in that time. So don't read more into it than is really into it. But really, some can't see into it because they're blind to it. When it says "Behiwatacho wada siol weradu." There's a very important part that even many of the so-called Jews, you understand, many of the Jews and the Hebrews and especially the Christians, because if the many of the Jews don't get it, then you know the Christians, the, most of the majority of Christians, they, they don't get it because what Christ said is true that they worship that which they know not. We know that which we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of Moa and Bessa Ima Nageda Yehuda. And as a fire consumed the 250 men offering incense, we learn a little bit further in Numbers 16 and 35. Ha Elohim told Musa Moses to order Eli Azar, Eli Azar, or El Osar, El Osar, El Osar. Osiris or Haila Haila Cherui, you understand? Haila Asar, the priests, to remove the fire pans as they had become sacred. In other words, after the fire, uh, after this, the fire now consumes the two hundred, the two hundred and fifty men. In verse thirty-four, we're gonna come back to verse thirty-three in a moment. It says, "Be zuriacho ye neberu ye israel lejoch hulu ka chua hetacho ye tenesa midaritu endatu ten below bararu." And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, least unless the earth swallow us up also. Belach. And there came out a fire from the sustainer, Yahweh, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, and consumed, or literally, Belach, ate them up. She ate them up, the 250 men that offered the Aishans, the 250 men that offered the incense. Are there any correspondences here that we can make with Rastafari from this? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there probably are, especially in this particular prophetic time. But before we get into the plague that was upon the rebels and what happened the next day, let us, let us try to understand what this going down into the pit, what was this going down into the pit was all about, where it says in verse, in verse 33, that let's go back to just turn the scripture here verse 33 where, where it says that they and all that appertaineth to them went down alive went down highlight that make that make a note of that phrase right there went down alive into the pit you see because most folks don't know what the pit really is this 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 opening up of the earth the lower earth you understand? And how the earth closed upon them. And notice what it says. It says that they perished from amongst the congregation. That word perish is also interpreted tefu to mean loss. Mino tefa. You understand when Ethiopians haven't seen, you know, other Ethiopians for a while, they say, you know, like almost how is it that 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 you were lost or perished to say? But you were lost. I couldn't find you, in other words. These ones who went down into the underworld, 
the underworld of the Amenta, you understand, the underworld of, of Sheol were separated from the living ones, from the living ones who were passing through the, the wilderness of the Amenta. But others went to the lower world. Now, now, Gerald Macy, in Ancient Egypt, Light of the World, we want to put this in because this helps to clarify it amazingly. This is the Egyptian wisdom that's found in the Hebraic and the Hebrew writings, which, which most of the rabbis, you understand, especially the Eurocentric, the white rabbis, though they may have done a good job on some of the, the rudimentary, the basics, they have totally overlooked the the ethnic and the 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 inner Africa and Egypt and Ethiopia connection with the Bible and in particular with Torah. But Gerald Macy said this. He said on um, page uh, uh, 471 of ancient Egypt, light of the world to 472. He says it is noteworthy that certain certain of the Psalms. That there are certain psalms which are in two different groups. And I want you to make a note of it. Um, make a note of these two type of uh, these two type of psalms, namely Psalms 42 to 49. That's one 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 group. The next group is Psalm 84 to 88. So these two sets of of psalms or groups of psalms are very important to understanding this mishtir concerning the sons of Kore as well as the gainsaying of the sons of Kore. Psalms 42 to Psalm 49, so 42, 43, 44, 45, 6, 4, 7, 4, 8, 49, and Psalms 84 to 88, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. They are these two particular groups that that Macy pointed out here it is noteworthy that certain of the psalms in two different groups are specialized are specialized they are specialized or or or, 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 or kind of um categorized as psalms of the sons of Kore. You'll find this subscription, especially in the King James um, Bible. Some of the newer Bibles take out that subscription. You understand the subscription, but the subscription is very important. It's actually part of the Psalm. But the, these two different groups, Psalm 42 to um, Psalm, Psalms 40, 42 to, uh, what was that? 42 to was it 40 49 psalm 42 to 49 and psalms 84 84 to 88 these particular two groups of psalms what is unique about these particular groups of psalms is that they have been specialized and categorized as psalms of or concerning sila because of or concerning the sons of Kore. Now, these were the rebels. These were the rebels once upon a time who, according to the Hebraic tradition, they disappeared. What we're studying here in the 38th weekly Torah, the sabbatical reading and feeding known as Korah or Kore, these are the rebels who, according to the Hebraic uh, Torah and Orit, and Book of Numbers, they disappeared when the earth opened and swallowed them up alive. When the earth opened and swallowed them up alive. But this is known and was known in the wisdom of Egypt, ancient Egypt, the Kamite mythos coming out of inner Africa and, and from the ancient Tobia or Ethiopia, Ethiopia. This was one of the legends of the Amenta, the Amenita, the Amenita. You understand? Wandering, indecisiveness, you understand? Um, variation, oscillation, you understand? The only earth that ever swallowed human beings was the nether world or the nether earth of the Seol or Sheol. 
And if we take our stand, in other words, with the sons of Korah in Amenta, then we can read these Psalms. In other words, if we now relocate our perspective to actually the sons of Korah's perspective, we'll recognize that in these particular two sets of Psalms, the, the person speaking are speaking from what was known in the wisdom of Egypt as the Amenta. So we have a very interesting, remember it says that, that, that swallowed them up. What's the, what's the language, the particular King James translation language? Went down alive. They went down alive into the pit. But he would touch or what is see all where do. But then when you read these two, these two groups of Psalms from 42 to 49 and 84 to 88, which are specialized and categorized as the, the Psalms concerning or, or of or for the sons of Kore, the speaker in the Psalm, the speakers in the Psalm are speaking from where the sons of Kore would have descended. How interesting. How in the world did this get in the Psalms of David then? You see, when you really read the Psalm and you recognize that subscription is a part of the Psalm, when it says Psalms of the sons of Kore, you would say, wait, they, they're, they're actually speaking from that point where they were swallowed up and they went down into Seol. Notice what it said. It didn't say they went down to the Mechaber. It didn't say they went to the grave. You understand? Because people go down to the grave dead. Right. It said they went down alive into Seol. What does Seol were do? What does Seol were do? So the only way we can read these Psalms and see how they should especially apply to those who were swallowed by Seol in the netherworld is to understand this this correspondence and this connection, especially when we now compare this. Now, one thing said by a certain commentator, which added to this surprising occurrence is that when Kore or Korah was swallowed in the earth, his sons were preserved. This is what's interesting. When, 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 when Korah was swallowed in the earth, his sons, you see what I'm saying, were preserved. They went down to the pit in death but lived on as did the manes or the shadows, you understand, the shades in the amenta, the shades in the amenta. You remember where it says um, in Psalm, uh, what is it, Psalm 23, the shadow of death? That's not just poetry. It's, it's poetry, yes, but it's not only poetry. It's poetry that is hiding to the uninitiated, the mystery. The sons of Korah are in Sheol. They are in Sheol. But says the speaker, notice, what does the speaker in the psalm says? He says that God will redeem my soul from the power of Sheol. He exclaims, bring me to thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. You remember? They didn't want to go up. They, they say An -metam, they would not come so they descended down there now the speaker is saying that ha Elohim that God would redeem my soul from the power from the power of Seol and he exclaims bring me to thy holy hill and to that tabernacle Psalm 45 is a psalm that is addressed to the anointed or the christened son to the christened or the anointed son known as the king the king's son even now the king equals the royal Herui, the royal chosen remember this portion in numbers chapter 16 is all concerning who has yahweh chosen who has yahweh chosen who is his Heruyo? who is his Heruyo? is it muse or is it the others now, this royal Horus, since Horus etymology out of ancient Gubit and ancient Tobia, the Tob, the good land, the Kui land, the god land, ancient Ethiopia, equals the royal Horus, who comes as a conqueror. He comes as the conqueror of death. He comes as the conqueror of Seol, of the underworld, the netherworld, the Duat, the Tuat. Now, Psalms 47 
it is a song of the resurrection. How interesting is that? When we get to Psalm 47 to see how the, 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 this group, what is contained in this group of Psalms and what is it truly disclosing to the initiated. Psalm 47 is a song of the resurrection from Amenta from that amenta that 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 doubting that that dowdy pouty you understand the amenata where it says that ha elohim egazi abihir is gone up with a shout he's gone up with a shout as when ayanaz rastafari ja you understand with a shout he's gone up he he ascends with a shout just like in the new testament it speaks about that trump the trumpet when the trumpet he shall descend with the sound of the trumpet but it says here that he is going up you understand he is going up to sit upon his holy throne in the eternal city quote on his holy mountain which was the way up from the dark valley for those who like the sons of Kore sank into the nether earth the underworld but who lived on to rise again and to reach the summit of the sacred mount who who rose again this is very interesting now the Kamite, according to the ancient egyptian or the Kamite mythos which comes from the ancient ethiopian or ethiopic mystir in the or the Tobian mysteries in its in its first time context. But according to the Kamite, the Kamite which becomes the repository of that as the progression move further from the beginnings, that the Kamite steps of ascent, they were buried. They were buried as a sort of a fetish figure. The fetish figure, these dolls that they find in ancient Egypt in the coffins with the dead for use typically typically or tip, typically excuse me when they woke to life in amenta when they woke to life in that in that in that land of doubt that land of shadows that twilight zone land it is said to the osar to osiris in the ritual osar thou hast received thy scepter thy pedestal and the flight of stairs beneath thee this was in readiness for his resurrection this was in readiness for his resurrection but what we have here in the ritual concerning the the osar or the asher the osar the asar is coronation the scepter thy pedestal and the flight of the stairs beneath thee in, res in, in readiness for his resurrection. Now, these images of the stand on which the gods or the Elohim were elevated, like Anup or Anubis, the dog star, the dog, the Kaleb at the pole or the Polaris, the Tat, the tat of stability or the tree like cross of stability and the steps of ascent to heaven the stairway in other words with the idea of stairway to heaven were buried with the mummy as emblems of divine protection which are with him when he emerges from the comatose state of the dead the comatose state because death is actually like a coma that comatose state of the dead the mutan the steps thus buried stand for the mount the mount of ascent the mount of ascension now i and i we are reminded of this by the psalmist when the psalmist sings abertu o lord adunay thou has brought up my soul from Sheol, thou Adoni, of thy favor or grace has made my mountain, has made my mountain to stand strong in the Psalms. Now, the, the mountain that was imaged in the tomb 
by the steps with the aid of which the deceased makes the ascent from the amen, amenta and can say, I am the neb or I am the no, the nob, the neb, the Lord of the stairs. I have made my nest on the horizon, on the horizon. So, so you have to really be able to visualize this from from the lower, from the lower half circle, making one step to the horizon, to the so-called middle region, or to the what's known as the horizon. I am the Lord of the stairs. I have made my nest on the horizon. Now, the ancient Pharaoh Unus. He exalts that the ladder, the, the mesalal, the ladder or steps have been supplied to him by his father, Ray, or Rai, the vision, as means of ascent to the spirit world, as means of ascent to the spirit world. Now, someone will say, well, th that's all very good and interesting, but is this really Christianity? Some people will say, is this really about Christ? Or What's interesting is when we look at some of the Dursan, and we look at some of the Kedase, especially um, that which concerns the Ethiopic uh, church. And we see how Kedistin Grimarium is also, in some sense, likened to this step, to becoming this step or this stairway. This stairway from the lower region to the higher region. So, yes, there is a relevance and there is a, a reference here. Now, when King Pepe makes his exodus from the lower earth to the Elysian fields, Sut sets up his maquet, his maquet or ladder in the Amenta by which the mains or the shadows, the shadows reaches the horizons. And secondly, the Harui or Horus, he erects his ladder. This is what we get in the Bible, Jacob's ladder. He, he erects his ladder by which the spirit of Pepe, of Pepe reaches up to heaven. This divides the steps of ascent into halves of seven each, as these are figured in the seven steps of the solar boat of that solar merkab or the merkaba some say makaba merkaba thus the total number is 14 as it was in the lunar the lunar mythos and the and the hebraic even the old testament reflects more of that lunar aspect and the new testament reflects more of that solar aspect so we now have the number 14 as it was in the lunar mythos when the eye of the full moon was attained at the summit of 14 steps or on top of the staircase on top of the staircase this is why in some of these older homes you notice they have the 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 circular staircase people think it's just a design it's, it's not just a design. It was a way that even in other cultures, following what they had learned from ancient Egypt, sought to duplicate within their own world the emblems, the living emblems and the symbols of, of, of the afterworld. So when they ended up in that comatose state and were awakened, they would be able to have a familiarity and navigate and navigate through that region and through that world and would not be lost in the proverbial twilight zone. Now the number, as may be explained, was 15 when it comes to the solely lunar reckoning of the month. Now when we get to the solar lunar reckoning, this is now when the AD or the age of Christos or Christ now when the sun or the sun comes now we have 15 in the solely lunar reckoning of the month so the month goes from roughly from uh 28 days or so the the lunar cycle or the feminine cycle and it goes to the solar cycle of roughly about 29 to 30 days thus in one computation there were 15 steps to the ladder of ascent 
from the depths of Amenta or the Seol or Sheol to the summit of the mount. Now, 15 of the Psalms, there are 15 Psalms from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. And, and please make, make note of this because this, this knowledge will come in handy as, as ones continue to, to study and to grow in the word that there are 15 Psalms, right? There are 15 Psalms from 120 to 134 that are termed Psalms of Degrees, that are called Psalms of Degrees from Psalm 120 to Psalm 134. In the Hebrew, they are called song, a song or songs of ascents, songs of ascents. In Bamarinya, we call it songs of degrees. Me'arig, uh, me'arig mezmor, the me'arig mezmor, me'arig, song of ascension, you understand, or raising up. You understand? Ascending. Now, in the Chaldi or the Chaldi, they were designated, quote, a song that was sung upon the steps of the abyss. Of the abyss. Abyssinia, Albicenia. You understand? These are the steps from the abyss or the depths of the Sheol mentioned by the speaker, the Tanagari who says, thou shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. Thou shalt bring me up again from the depths of the earth. And the other, uh, in another place, out of the depths have I cried to thee, Abertu, I father, his father, father of the house, I've cried to thee, Adoni. Thus, the steps constituted a means of ascent. These steps, these degrees, they constituted a means. These are like rungs on Jacob's proverbial ladder. From the Sheol or the Seol or Amenta, the underworld, and in the Song of Ascents, we can clearly now identify the staircase of the great God by which the summit of the mount was attained. Now, this reminds me of what Ketamawi Hala Selassie said in the ultimate challenge, um, the utterance of his majesty, selected speech and the utterance of his majesty concerning the, the ultimate challenge where he says, where he speaks about reaching the summit destined for us the summit destined for us by the great creator, reaching that summit, to reach the summit of the mount. We must understand and know his way. We have to study to show ourselves approved. Now, the speaker, and not just approved just because we studied it, but approved in word and in work, all because of that grace, that, that faith through that grace understand the connection please some people will say it's not about works and think works don't matter works do matter but but the salvation is all a matter of grace his salvation the opportunity that we all have if you're interested in in scriptures and torah in the word of the king of kings and his christ in your salvation and working out your salvation that is grace that is a gift because if you can think back, there's a time when you wasn't concerned about it. Nobody can make you even be interested in it. But all of a sudden, it is, it is, it is, it is firing your heart. You have a passion for this. Uh, you know, it's, like, it's like the fire is continuing to grow. You understand? But unfortunately for some, it's, 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 it's smoldering. May we pray for them. Now, the speaker has dwelt long. The speaker now of these psalms has dwelt long in the death dark land. In other words, like many of us who have dwelt a long time in this wilderness, in this wandering, in this wilderness, he will lift up his eyes to the mountains or to the mount. 
You understand? He will lift up his eyes to the mountains from whence cometh his help. Unto thee do I lift up mine eyes, O thou that sittest in the heavens. In other words, he is in the underworld. You have to imagine and picture a circle. Draw a line at the horizon in the circle. He is in the lower, the lower orb, the lower portion of the circle. He is looking up to the heavens and seeing the one who dwells in the uppermost region of the Polaris stars. And he's saying, unto thee do I lift up my eyes, O thou that sittest in the heavens. The Lord hath chosen Zion. He hath desired it for his habitation, for his habitation on this horizon, on this horizon that is known as the earth. This is where the scripture talks about that every mountain shall be brought down and every low place shall be brought up to level that horizon according to the eschatology. As he had already done when his name when his name was Kanum, or when his name was Osar or Osiris, the Lord of Sheni. The celestial mountain is the place where the throne, the Zufan, was prepared for the last judgment in the mysteries of Amenta and figured in the Ma'at, figured in the Ma'at upon the mount or the summit of the mount it was there that osar that asher haish sat in his throne judging righteously as king forever the mount was also called the staircase of the great god the mount is also referred to in jacob's ladder now the osar or the asher the Asher, Ehye Shera Ehye, Asher Haish, the Asher or Osiris is said to sit at the head of the staircase, surrounded by his circle of gods, the Elohim. This is where the Psalms as well speaks about he judgeth in the midst of the gods. In the pre Osiren cult, or the pre Osirian culture, it was Atumre who sat as the great judge in the Ma'at, in the Ma'at, or the Me'at, the Me'at. And this is a word that we have even in the Ethiopic, and it's an interesting connection with that. This is the Ma'at now, according to the Kamite mythos, is the hall of truth, law, and justice. The, it's the hall of truth, law, and justice. As we have seen, the mount on high was also imaged by other types of the ascent to heaven. By other types of the ascent to heaven. Now, this is a very interesting point and, and matter that when we connect it with scriptures in our sabbatical studies, we begin to comprehend and really see the full picture in its proper context. You see, a lot of these areas of scripture, because the ancient Kamite and Egyptian and inner Africa um, wisdom, the wisdom keys have been neglected. This is why we have so many, so many um, abominable um, uh, versions and perversions of so-called Christianities. So many different uh, denominations of um, of so-called Christianity or counterfeit Christianity, because when they read these areas of Scripture, they do not understand it or comprehend it in its true context. You see, when these scriptures were written down, even in the Hebrew dispensation, the people understood their relationship to ancient Egypt. They understood themselves to be black. You understand? They would not have any problem with their blackness. You understand? So they knew that they were in Egypt and they passed for Egyptians while in Egypt. They understood the connection with, with Ethiopia through Musa, his Ethiopian wife, and his, and his father-in-law. So these things were not mysteries to them, but given to 
three, four thousand years later, you understand, and especially over the past 400 plus years, how to make a slave and and how to further rob a people of their identity. In plantation Christianity, those long-headed, mule-headed, donkey Negroes don't know what they're talking about. You understand? And on one level, you, you feel sad for them. You understand? But because of their arrogance in white man's perversion, in, in the blonde hair, blue-eyed, blush, rouge, and lipstick-wearing Jesus, Jesus insanity called falsely called Christianity, they don't have not even the slightest clue what the scriptures is really talking about you understand and that's what makes it sad on one level until you buck up upon their 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 arrogant pride and ignorance you understand and make believe you understand therefore they will have to experience their own experience so they can know the truth for themselves but this is a very interesting portion right here and i like to touch on a little bit more of this I know we're still in the sabbatical study for the for the thirty eighth um, Torah reading, which is called Kore. But as those who have listened and heard the the, the first part of of, of this um, explication on on the pit and going down into Co and going down alive into the pit, can anybody go down alive into the pit? What does this mean? This was a reflection on the Kamite mythos. You understand? And it's further explicated in the Psalms. So it's impossible to understand the speaker in the Song of Ascents or the Psalms of 15 degrees is at the base of the mythical mount, the base of the mythical mount in Sheol, which is Amenta. So when you read the Sheol, see, they, 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 they call it the pit. In King James translation, which is very dubious because it's not really called the pit in the Amharic or the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, they call it Sheol. In the Amharic and the, and the Ethiopic, is called the Seol. So it's very clear to anyone who's reading the Hebrew and the, and the, um, the Amharic or Gutas that it's not talking about a regular pit like they fell into, you know, or some rocks in the ground or something. It is speaking of the mythical mount. You understand? It's speaking of the Sheol or the Amenta. The Lord, whom the speaker in the 15 Psalms of degrees, Yema'arig Mezmur, whom he addresses is upon the summit of his holy hill, just as Osar, Osiris was, just as Atum or Atum Ray was just as Sebek or Sobek was is the great God, the great God seated at the head of the staircase in his distress. The speaker, he cries to the Lord, to the Adoni, the Atum, the Atumi, the Adoni. He, he cries to the Lord for deliverance from the enemy who in this case is suit or seti or suit as in sate shate more correctly shate as in shate on shate on he fell from grace ana hana shate on the liar and deceiver him that hateth peace is who he's addressed in these psalms. He's addressed as the one who hates peace. He hates Hotep. My soul, he says, hath long had her dwelling with him that hateth Salam, that hateth Shalom, that hateth, we, by extension, the Shabbat, that hateth the Senbet, that hateth Res. I am for peace. Salamawi name. You understand? Woe is me, he furthermore cries, Woyoling, that I show, show sojourn, that I dwell in Meshach. I dwell in the Meshach. What is the Meshach or the Meska? The Meska in the Egyptian as a place name, it signifies the place of scourging and purifying in the Sutenken. 
in the Suten Ken. It is the Kamite form of what would be considered purgatory, as a place, really, more correctly, of the rebirth. The rebirth in the Amenta, in the Amenetta, the Amenetta, the Amenta, even from the Ge'ez and, and, the, and the Amharic, the place of the doubting. The place of the double-mindedness, the being born again, not being conformed a, to the world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind in and through that amenta, that wilderness for the soul on its resurrection from the dead, kamutan, prior to the ascent of the steps. So you see the resurrection from the mutan, the resurrection from the dead has to happen prior to the ascent of the steps or the ladder or the staircase or the column or the mount. So first one has, this is very interesting because a lot of people believe that, well, the resurrection is going to happen after they are physically dead. Well, the resurrection ain't going to happen after you physically are dead if you have not resurrected, you understand, from the dead while you live. You see what I'm saying? The first resurrection is spiritual. It is psychological. And then the latter resurrection, you understand, with the glorified body, you understand, that can be seen and understood, you understand, as being in that so-called future or world to come, you understand, in that world to come. But in this world, one must rise, resurrect before they die, because if they don't resurrect before they physically die, you understand? There is a lot of wandering, a lot of demons. There, there's a lot. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there. Like they say, there's a lot of stuff out there. And it's not to scare nobody, but just to speak the truth about it. There are so many dimensions, you know, like even the Twilight Zone show used to tell people there are many dimensions. And that that guy who did that, that show, he was on to something, as many of us know, like a lot of that stuff was some deep, some some really deep, but 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 ancient, ancient um um parables explained in a modern way about the nature of the human being and 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 this 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 wrestling that is going on in the in the spirit and in the soul of man but when we get to the point of the sixth abode let's just go on to on passing through the sixth abode of the mentor where the speaker pleads let me not be stopped at the mesca let not the wicked have mastery over me this is what now in ancient Egypt, it reads like this. Let me not be stopped at the Mesca. Let not the wicked have mastery over me. Now, when you compare that, you understand, when you compare that with the, the, the Psalms, you can see it's speaking of one and the same spiritual reality. It wasn't like, well, we're going to take from Egypt because we're just trying to take from Egypt and deny that it's Egyptian. No, that those ancients and sages and wise people had touched on eternal truth. And any culture or any people that have any inkling of salvation touching on something that is true and is good would hold on to it. Only foolish people would let go of that. So this is how we know who we are as the once lost but now found sheep because we have been like that foolish people. But furthermore, in the sixth abode of the mentor, the speaker pleads, let me join my two hands together in the divine dwelling which my father Atum hath given me. He who hath established an abode for me above the earth wherein is wheat and barley of untold quantity which the son of my own body offereth to me there as oblations upon my festivals and when the mains has passed through this mesca or meshech or place of purifying he prays to be delivered from the hells that await the damned and who are the damned well according to christianity and according to christology 
And when we tie it truly into the Old Testament or the Hebrew root, you understand, we can then say, according to the Messiah, and according to teachings and the testimony of the Messiah, ones who have not Christ are damned. So we all are damned without Christ in spirit and in truth. So these hells await all who are without. And it doesn't mean that one who says, I'm a Christian, I go to church Sunday. It, it, remember, we say in spirit and in truth. You see what I'm saying? So you need to understand what does that mean. In Meshach or the Mesca, the sufferer says he will lift up his eyes to the mountains from whence his help shall come. He shall lift up his eyes, notice not I, but his eyes to the mountains from whence his help shall come. And for us as Arastafari, this psalm is one of the fire keys, one of the very important psalms that we can say in our type of synagogue or Ayabingi worship. You understand? And, and coming together, this is one of the main psalms, and this is one of the main psalms of the mishtir, the mysteries as well. The mount is, is pluralized, pluralized, more than one. But it is the summit upon which stands the heavenly Jerusalem or the Aru Salam. Build it as a city that is compact together whither the tribes go up even the tribes of yahweh the tribes of yahweh the tribes of of ihu to give thanks to the adoni there were set thrones for judgment the thrones of the house of david of dvd of dawit which are the 12 thrones, the 12 thrones in heaven, as described in the book of Revelations. So in order now to understand what Revelation is talking about, we need to understand what David and the 15 Psalms was talking about. But in order to understand what the 15 Psalms were talking about, we need to understand what the Torah, the foundation, the Orit is saying. Because the single mount, remember the mountains are pluralized, are more than one. But then when it speaks of the single mount, it is speaking of Zion, which was the Egyptian Shenu also known as the Hetep, the Hetepu, which was the Mount of Rest. For the Lord hath chosen Zion, he hath desired it for his habitation. This is my resting place forever. On the last of the 15 steps of ascent, a call is made upon the starry luminaries to praise the Lord, to praise Yahweh. Behold, bless ye Yahweh, all ye servants of Yahweh, which by night stand in the house of Yahweh. Lift up your hands to the sanctuary and bless ye Yahweh. Yahweh bless thee out of Zion. These are they who stand by night around the throne at the top of the steps. And this last finishing touch is very definitely astronomical. In other words, in order to explicate this, we need to understand the astro theology. Not that it's all astro theology like some would falsely claim you understand but there is an astral theological component you understand so that all can be all and one can properly comprehend the true context of this as egyptian or Kamite or ancient ethiopian there was an upper circle of the great spirits around the throne upon the summit of the mount who were called, they were called the Shenu. They were called the Shenu. 
and the mount of the Shenu is none other than the mount Sion, the mount of the Shenu. And it's interesting because in the Hebrew, in the mezuzah, we have the sheen. The sheen, which is similar to the negusu se. You understand? The negusu se, as in the se, as in selase or shalase, the she. And when you look at the glyph, both in the Hebrew and the Ethiopic, and then when you understand this from its ancient Egyptian or Kamite hieroglyphical um, correspondence, you can see basically the link coming from the ancient time preserved somewhat in ignorance by the so-called Ashkenazi and the Khazarian European Jews and now brought into proper alignment by his people who are being brought back into their own vine and into their own fig tree. So now under one of the names or the Egyptian names, the valley of the Amenta or the Sheol is called Akar. It's called the Akar. Now, why is Akar important? This valley of Akar, we identify with Akor, A-C-H-O-R, the A-K-A-R, identified with the A-C-H-O-R. It's called the Valley of Sorrow in the Hebrew. Akor's gloomy veil, a gloomy valley. It, it is sung in the Christian hymn. And this is the essential character of Akar. It has been observed by Renolf, um, one uh, uh, European um, Egyptologist, that the notion of obscurity is connected with Akar, whereas the notion of brightness is essentially associated with the mount. So at the valley, at the valley portion, the valley, and here we get in the Psalms, the valley of the shadow of death, which is the Akar. Then at the mount is the brightness, the two gates. The two gates of Akar are mentioned in the pyramid text of Pepi as equivalent in the sense of the two gates of Seb or the Seba or the Sheba, in other words, or the earth. The difference lies between the mythical and the eschatological applications. The gates of Seb refer to our earth and the gates of Akar to the Amenta, the land of shades in the earth of eternity or the Seol, the Sheol, the pit where the, the, the sons of Kore and Datan and Abiram and everyone that was with them went down there. When the valley of Akor is to become a door of hope, it is in the wake of the soul of God who goes forth from the gate of Akar to the summit of the mount. He goes from the gate of Akar. And we find this to be very interesting in connection with Arastafari revelation. Back in, what was it, 19, what was it, 1998, 90, 90 something, when they allegedly found the so-called bones of his majesty. And there was all these newspaper articles that was talking about the Ethiopian emperor that like resurrects. He rises from his from the grave in a sense. This is interesting because that for us was the wake of the solar 13 months of sunshine. God. You understand the God of the Rastafari, 13 months of sunshine, hence solar God, who went forth from the gates of the Akar as we started to come towards a new millennium to the summit of the mount in preparation for Sion and the next portion of this unfolding of prophecy. But Israel, we as Israel was to be judged. This is what has been going on beginning and this is what's going to begin to increase the judgment on the beta israel and i'm saying the judgment on the lost sheep especially you understand and the discipline the discipline that the, 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 the disciplining of us who recognize who we are but still have to be purified and purged you understand we who still have to be purified and 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 purged. So Israel was to be judged and to make answer, 
in the judgment hall, which stood at the place of exit in the topography of Amenta, quote, as in the day when she previously came up out of the land of Egypt, quote, as in the day when she, as in the, 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 the day when she previously came up out of the land, out of the land of Egypt, which was one and the same thing in the mythical representation of the Exodus. In fact, some who suppose uh, history here, this supposed history is identified with the, with the mythos by Estrus in the apocryphal book of Estrus or, or Ezra Sutael who portrays the last judgment which is to be as it was in the time of Akan, Akan, when he was doomed to die in the valley of Akor, the Egyptian valley of the shadow in the Akar. In this valley was the sepulcher of Osiris, of the Osar. Between the two mountains or horizons of the east and the west or the west and the east and this is the position of Ethiopia this is the geographical position of Ethiopia you understand thus the valley in this sense is to be understood as the Rift Valley which has become active, just so you know, volcanoes are also active. A sea is going to be created in that region. There's going to be a whole new topography to Ethiopia in that particular region. So when we do come out, those who are to come out, hopefully ones will know where to settle and where to set up because there's going to be a geographical, um, re a new heaven and new earth, in other words, according to the scriptures. You understand? So this valley, now we understand, is the Rift Valley, and this was called in ancient times the sepulcher, or the burial place of the Asher, Asher Ha'ish, blessed is the man. Between the two mountains, or the hoary zones, the zones of the Cherui, the horizons of the west and the east, Ethiopia between the Muslim world of the so-called east and the Christian world so-called of the west. So the graves of the so-called Hadentat deity, Hetzi Abib, were made in a valley or a narrow pass between two mountains. And from these he like unto the Osiris or the Asher Ha'ish rose again and made his transformation in the tree of dawn, in the tree of dawn. Now, the nature of the Akor. Now, when I'm going over this, I'm thinking about um, Abu Kedus, thinking about the ascension of Abu Kedus to the to the um, immovable stars that there, there are stars that 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 don't move because they are firm they're fixed they they're, they're like the root of this whole this whole universe this whole dream or world in other words and so I'm seeing that connection with Ethiopia there the valley the rift valley some of the the the, the things that have happened that can connect with this outworking of the of, of, of the of the of the mythos or the mishtia, the mystery of God in Christ. But just to conclude this part here, because there's much more to this, and some of this um, needs to be gone over. Some of what we've already gone over, one needs to either listen to it again or take notes and do a little bit of study or just to meditate it, you understand, for themselves. The nature of Akor is I is indicated in Hosea, in Hosea's prophecy when he says of the of israel he says of israel in the book of hosea um he says i will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and i will give her the valley of akor for a door of hope and she shall make answer in the judgment there it was in akor that the stoning of akan Akan occurred 
in the valley of vengeance and it is there that Israel was to answer for all her iniquities thus whatsoever events had occurred in Akor's gloomy vale or valley took place in the Akar or the Awakerti, the Awakerti of the nether earth, which was a place of passage for the mains through Amenta or the Sheol. In the distance lay the Aru paradise, far off in the distance lay the Aru paradise with the seven cows called the providers of plenty resting in the green fields of peace and prosperity the veil of akar led to the aru meadows or the aru salam the iaru salam and out of those shall inherit it and my servants shall dwell there and sharon shall be a pasture for flocks and the valley of Akor, a place for herds to lie down in, for my people that have sought me. But ye that forsake Yahweh, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for fortune, and that fill up mingled wine for destiny, I will destine you to the sword now this speaks to the lost sheep black folks this speaks to the 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 lost black sheep of the family to those black people the n-word the niggers in the in the americas in the caribbean they are the ones that are preparing a table for fortune they're the ones who are mingling the mixed wine to destiny and they are the ones that yahweh says that he will destine or divine for them the sword this is the mountain of amenta fortune and destiny fortune and destiny are two egyptian deities who are mentioned here by the name of god g-a-d not g-o-d but it's basically the same thing since the, when the word god is is gentile it's not our word we just use it as a placeholder to once come grow up into consciousness but the name of god and many god and many many gods but only mentioned to be abjured they are only mentioned here to be abjured as egyptian the goddess of fortune was the ranut who was also the giver of good fortune in the harvest the god of destiny or fate was called shy the apportioner of the lot the one who apportioned the the befanta or, or or the the gorsha one could say these are to be cast out and their worshipers those who worship so-called good fortune speaking of worldly fortune fate and destiny are to be cast out and their worshipers to be destroyed but the mold of the imagery it remains in the valley of Akor. indeed the chart of judea looks like a copy of the scenery in amenta when you look at judea when you look at judah in particular israel to a degree but judah ancient judah it looks like a copy of the scenery of the Egyptian underworld known as Amenta as it would be if the land had originally mapped out by the immigrants by those who immigrated from Egypt and were well acquainted with the mysteries because their leader Musa the true leader he was learned in the wisdoms the wisdom of the Egypts and was a man mighty in word and indeed he just didn't talk it but he did it amenta and the aru paradise with its heaven on the summit of the mount have been repeated at innumerable sacred places of the world so this idea of the amenta the underworld and the aru paradise or the iaru salam the iaru the heavenly atmosphere the iaru you understand or the aru in ancient egypt paradise with its heaven on the summit of the mount have been repeated 
in other sacred places, innumerable sacred places of the world. For example, the gardens of the gods, the holy mountains of Shasta in, in Colorado, and, and, and various and various other places as well. So we can see that the first resurrection of two and the coming forth today, coming forth by day, occur in the valley of Akar, the valley of the passengers, the passers-by, you understand, the men Gedenyoch, the burial place for Gog, for Gog and Magog, or Gog and his multitude, the valley of Elah, or Allah, the valley of the giants, the valley of Raphaim, the valley of death, the valley of judgment, the valley of Siddim, the valley of Hinnom, or the Gen Hinnom, Gehenim, are all figures of Amenta in the netherworld, the underworld of the mythos and according to the eschatology, and therefore related to and of the Hebrew Sheol or Seol, also called the pit. Now, the valley of decision is a terminology that we probably have heard before. This is likewise the Valley of Amenta associated with the Lord of the Mount, the Lord of the Mountain or the Mountain of the Lord. The Valley of the Lower Earth in which the Great Judgment was delivered at the end of the world or the age or really the end of a particular cycle of time which was annual, which was annually observed in the mysteries like we have the annual festivals and feasts according to the lunar calculation in our Hebraic way, our Hebraic, our Judeo-Christian way of life. So there, there is a reminder, these are preparations. So when we come into these actual end cycles, the great cycles, we already have gone through the ritual or the preparation, the Moedim of Elohim, as it still is in the Jewish ceremonies, which are celebrated at the end of every year. Adonai is about to judge the whole world in the Valley of Judgment. Here it's called the Jehoshaphat or Jehoshaphat multitudes multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the lord is near in the valley of decision the sun and the moon are darkened and the stars withdraw their shining and the lord shall roar from zion and utter his voice from jerusalem and the heavens shall shake but the lord will be a refuge to his people and a strong hold to the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am Yahweh Loheka dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down sweet wine and the hills shall flow with milk. And all the brooks of Yehuda of Judah shall run with waters and a fountain shall come forth out of the house of Adoni and water the valley of the Acacias. Every feature of this imagery is and ever had been Egyptian and thus Ethiopian, Ethiopic from the very Sen Bet Salam, Shabbat Shalom. We're in the 38th weekly Torah, the sabbatical reading and feeding, and we're going to find out now what happened to the sons of Kore when they provoked Yahweh. Now, we're reading about and we're studying about in the chapter, Numbers chapter 16, about the rebellion, the rebellion. And when we last left off, Moses basically set a, 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 a witness and a challenge in a sense, you understand, so that the people would know, you understand, that these rebels, the sons of, of Kore, that they had provoked Yahweh because Moses had told the Israelites when we last left off that if these men 
namely um uh Ore, Datan, Abiram and their families who stood at the entrance of their tents and did not want to come up, you understand? Um, because they had accused Moses of not being sent by the God of the Hebrews, the true and living God, but really wanting to make himself a king and had not brought them in the land and they're in the wilderness. And, and th this whole murmuring and complaining and, and, and grumbling. So Moses told the Israelites that if these men were to die of natural causes, then God did not send him, Moses. But if, but, but if the Almighty, if John caused the earth to swallow them up, then these men had provoked, they had spurned the true and living God in Numbers chapter 16, verse 28 to verse 30. Just as Musa, just as Moses had finished speaking, the earth opened and swallowed them, their households and all Korah's people and all of their people. And the Beta Israel, the Israelites, they fled in terror. They fled in terror and in horror. Numbers chapter 16 verses 31 to 34. Indihim hone yihin kal hulu menagara befetsama gize ka be ta ka ka beta chacho yalo mereta te senetke and it came to pass as he had made an end of speaking all these words that the ground c -c -c clave asunder that was under them, Kuter Salasa Hulet, Midaritu Mafuan Kefta, and Orsuna Beta Sabo Chacho Nemalek Orema Yenabrutin Asoj Hulu, Ikao Chacho Nemo Hulua Wat Chacho, and the earth opened her mouth, the earth opened Midaritu Afwan Kefta, and swallowed them up and their houses, and all the men, the people, to say that appertaineth, that belongeth to Kore, and all their goods, and all their belongings, Kut el Salasa, source, verse 33, and Arsum, le Narsum, yenebaru hulu behiwata chowa wadasiola,